I didn't know if it would be too uncomfortable for them or if there would be any point to any of it at all. What I did know was that I had amazing interview subjects with stories to tell, and I hoped that them speaking about their journeys would motivate Devin and Zach to learn more. Hi, my name is Beza Alford, and I've been wearing my hair the same way every day for almost the past two years. And when I was in middle school, I wanted to grow my hair out, but my natural hair is like really kinky curly, so it's really difficult to deal with. Um, so I started chemically straightening my hair all throughout middle school. It felt like a cop-out because I knew that I didn't really have like the skills to take care of my hair because I was adopted. So all of my family is white with all the love in the world. My mom didn't know how to take care of black hair, which meant that I never learned how to take care of black hair. So by the time that I was old enough to maybe like potentially know how to do that, I didn't have those skills kind of already ingrained in me at that age. Straightening my hair at that point just really felt like the best thing to do for myself, even though in the long run it was really damaging. And when I was in high school, I put my hair into dreadlocks and I grew out natural dreadlocks for four years until they were about at my shoulders. I think my hair just kind of identifies me as definitely a part of like a black culture that really likes natural style and something unique and indifferent to standards of having like long, straight, perfect hair. My name is Deontay Paletta. You can call me Yante. My father used to cut my hair low. I used to have a peanut head. 10th grade years when I started to grow my hair out and like really started to curl my hair and really like, you know, get into my roots of like, you know, of the curls. The things that make a good barber is number one, your hairline has to be crisp. And second, the fade has to be nice and clean. It has to be faded, it has to be blended because the fade's not nice and mess up the whole haircut. Third, just like, Customer service, you know, talking to, engaging with your customer, getting to know your customer on a personal level. That way, you know, you don't lose that customer. You got the car, you walk through the door, I'll go dap him up, say what's up, you know, what's up, Ricky? He'll ask, you know, how you doing? And then, you know, he'll ask me what I want. And I'll be like, you know what I want. I get the regular. He's like, all right, cool. And the regular's just, I get a temp fade, and I get it blended down, and the same in the back. And then he'll line me up. He'll razor cut my edges and everything, make sure everything's clean and cut, give him his fee. I'm not going away. <laughs> um, my name is Kayla Palmer. My hair is always kind of, even the colors that I choose to put in it has always kind of represented like who I am, um, how I see myself, what I'm comfortable in. Like it's just having fun and experimenting because it really it's really incredible the different things that people can do with their hair just with a little bit of product a little bit of patience some experience you can learn new tips from other people try hairstyles that you've never tried just because you see somebody else rocking it and you're like, hey, well, you know, that might be something that I can try with my hair. When we as women of color express ourselves through our hair, it's for us. It's so we can present ourselves in our best viewed light to the world. And that's not really for others to judge or comment on or try to take. On every trip, we try to teach participants about LNT principles, which is leave no trace. Basically, we are trying to leave every place that we visit better than we found it. We always tell our participants to leave only footprints and take only pictures. We really believe that to ensure that everyone enjoys the outdoors, not just our program, but everyone that's visiting, it's really important to respect the environment and make it feel as though you are getting away from civilization instead of leaving things like trash.
really the woods are pretty impactful in general when you get out there. It's that awestruck moment when you just look around and say, wow, look at this. I can't believe this is here. I think one of the cool things with that is people don't realize how much stuff there is in their own backyards. Um, there's just lots of things within proximity. People are always like, I got to go to Colorado. But in reality, you don't need to go to Colorado. You can look around the East Coast and find beautiful locations that you can go explore. And then you have that shared experience with the people you're on the trip with. There's no better thing to me than being a part of a bunch of people that share the same passion and the same love that I do. And I've built so many great relationships through the sport of baseball. Starting at a very young age, Chase Haney realized baseball was his passion. Through the years, he made it his mission to refine his skills and become the best player he could be. By the end of his groundbreaking senior season in high school with 62 strikeouts, Chase was ready to take his talents to FSU. I came in not really expecting much and with Coach Martin and all them I guess they really liked me and you know they threw me out there anytime they had the chance and I ended up leading the team in appearances both my freshman and sophomore year. But then on July 20th 2017 during a summer league game Chase experienced a career-defining pop in his elbow. Knowing right away something horrible happened Chase left the game. A few hours later, he received the devastating news that he would have to undergo Tommy John surgery, and his baseball career was put to a halt. Recovering from Tommy John is not just a physical thing, it's a mental thing. Um, you're basically down for 14, 16 months. It's a grind just getting back to where you were before. Physically, it's difficult just because all the things you got to do coming back from an injury as is. Um, but mentally, it's also really difficult because you lose yourself as a person whenever you lose your athletic ability. But the same drive that fueled his on-field success would help Chase overcome his toughest opponent yet. Chase has unbelievable determination in everything he does, especially recovering from Tommy John surgery. The, the late nights that he puts in and the early mornings doing the rehab, eating the right stuff, doing everything, going above and beyond what everybody tells him to do, it's definitely something special, that's for sure. With such strong resolve and determination, Chase didn't allow the injury to keep him down for long. After 15 months of rigorous physical therapy and support from his Seminole family, Chase is back, ready to take the mound. I had a couple things that kind of kept me motivated. Um, I would say the first thing was just, you know, knowing that I would be getting back on the field with my teammates. You know, there's no better feeling in the world than suiting up and taking the field and seeing 6,000 fans in the stands cheering for you. It really shows that you're playing for more than yourself. With a star-studded team, a talented new pitching coach, and Mike Martin's last shot at a College World Series title, it seems that Chase has reunited with the Knolls at the perfect time. With outstanding leadership abilities, he hopes to guide his team to the top. Uh, it, it's a tremendous honor. Um, I'm humbled by it because it's something that I wasn't aspiring to attain. I just wanted to win and win championships. This year's All-Star Ensemble includes four-year letter winner Mickey Dillard, four-time All-American golfer Carolyn Westrup, former starting quarterback and college football coach Rick Stockstill, and legendary FSU baseball coach Mike Martin. To be in the Hall of Fame at Florida State is so exciting because you're talking about being in the same fraternity with Charlie Ward, Dave Cowens, just to name two. Uh, how do you start naming more than that for fear of leaving one of the greatest of all time out? But what I learned, what I took from Florida State is Coach Bowden. Coach Bowden is the greatest coach, not football coach, the greatest coach of all time. And I learned so much from him, not only from a coaching standpoint, but just how to lead your life. 